Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is none other than Lightlager here, and today I'm gonna be doing a bit different style of a video. So instead of talking about the next moonshots or low market cap gems, I wanna talk about five projects which I actually find overvalued, some more than others. And I'm basing this on their actual utility, the ecosystem, the roadmap, and the potential future value of these projects as well. And obviously comparing them to their actual competition, which a lot of people don't like to do when their favorite coins are concerned. But let's get started without further ado. You can leave your own comments down below. Do you believe with this assessment? And obviously leave some of the other projects which I have not mentioned in this video. So starting off with Ethereum Classic. Now Ethereum Classic has gone through a bit of a rough patch last year in 2020 um they got hacked three times and by hack i mean 51 percent attack and that has to do a lot with the fact that they just had a way too low hashing power so not enough miners and this allowed basically a third party to basically start minting uh, more Ethereum Classic uh, tokens and dump them on the market. And this led exchanges basically uh, delisting the project altogether or requiring like, I don't know, like 9,000 confirmations until you would see your Ethereum Classic on your account. So not a really good stage, but uh, this is not actually everything that is going on with ETC. And here you can see like, but they are active here, buddy. Uh, there's update here. Well, that's not enough. Okay, so let's kind of assess this Ethereum Classic as an ecosystem. So to fork out of Ethereum, it is going to be keeping uh, the proof of work. They're never going to be going into proof of stake. But the fundamental fact is Ethereum Classic is a zero dApp chain. There are no people building on this blockchain. They are, there's not even a AMM swapping site on uh, ETC right now. The only DEX that they had, Saturn Network, is also down as of right now. So there's like zero transactions to be made on Ethereum Classic because there's pretty much zero uh, worthwhile tokens created on their chain. Um, there's not even like pegged or proper bridges in place to be doing a lot of things. Uh, the development, I mean, I wouldn't say it's slow or anything, and they obviously have gone through a lot of debates and everything, and Huskinson has, uh, you know, tipped into the ETC and what's going on with them, and criticized them for a valid reason, which I agree with uh, whole, wholesome, because there's nothing in this chain, and the value of the proposition of the chain really comes down to... Um, you know, the dApps and the promise of the roadmap ahead. And it went to really crazy prices in here, like literally from uh, five bucks into above hundred dollars. And I would have made a lot of money if I if would have uh, sold at that, um, actually not hundred bucks, but 38 bucks there. So I would have made a lot of very uh, good money there if I would have actually sold at that point. But the fundamental fact here is that this is not a project that I would consider um, something worth investing in right now. If you're holding it right now, I would just try to find a way, basically. What is wrong with this chart? Because it's right now saying 65 uh, uh, price here, but it's... Um, okay, there we go. So it did indeed go into... Uh, above 100, like 140 or something like that. And this was clear manipulation, obviously. There's no reason for ETC be uh, valued even remotely at this price. It's currently ranked 19. And nobody is, I mean, the only things that kind of keep it afloat is the fact that it's still on Coinbase and it has a grayscale fund. And that's pretty much it. So there's some institutional players out there probably Ethereum whales, which started to bump and dump this coin for some reason. But ETC has no future whatsoever. It has no uh, way to really scale from its problems. And when, because they don't really have a lot of solutions for like the infinite scaling, not that they need any because <laughs> nobody's using their chain. And obviously there has been a couple of delistings here, but as you can see from like the actual markets, it's indeed in a lot of these places and the volumes are okay, I guess. And that's just been a lot of speculation, but this project is inherently has no place in terms of the community activity, the development activity, the amount of dApps. What the hell is this chain trying to do? And even if it had all of those, you still would have to be better than the alternatives. 
what does ETC can offer that Matic cannot uh, offer? What it can offer that Ethereum is not able to offer or some other, um, you know, uh, another chain that uses the EVM. So ETC is definitely my number one in terms of the overvalued. I think it's uh, literally less than a dollar to be honest, but because it has those uh, people who have invested in the days in the past and they really want to pump their worthless tokens up, and that has kind of allowed it to rally, but there's no reasoning for that. And it's going to be a matter of time until there's going to be another attack on the chain and people are going to be pumping up the price and then they're going to be attacking it again. But let's uh, move on. Next up, we actually have a bit of a... Um, this might be the most controversial pick on the list, and that is Uniswap. And I'm going to be reasoning the Uniswap in a pretty simple uh, manner, which is Uniswap doesn't have actually any inherent utility outside of the governance. And I've said in the past that the governance tokens are very overvalued and there's many reasons for that and I will not go into many of them, I will not make a whole tirade about them, but the earning capability of governance uh, can be obviously utilized. But there are so many different things about the Uniswap uh, governance which don't necessarily bring any form of utility that most people would need. and. The problem with Uniswap really comes down to it is run by ETH maximalists and they don't have any desire to bridge over to another chain. So SushiSwap is on Phantom. I think they are on Binance, even Binance Smart Chain. And then you have projects like One Inch, which is currently on Polygon, Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum. So in my opinion, uh, projects like Sushi and... Um, one inch have a lot more utility due to the fact that they have better tokenomics than Uniswap, in my opinion, at least. And the other fact is that they are multi-chain. So the risk of um, Uniswap will become absolutely worthless if Ethereum fails to meet its goal. Because everything rides on Uniswap to be relevant and Ethereum to be relevant. So uh, one inch and Sushi are not bidding on the one chain. So they're going to be benefiting uh, even if Ethereum falls, they still got that like a one foot out of the door, so to speak. So they have these other chains which which they are supported on. And this is not something that Uniswap really um, benefits from. And uh, There has been no announcement of actually using Uni as a token to pay the fees on their Layer 2 solution, which is another problem that they have. There's no burning mechanisms. You have this giant, huge supply. You're already on all the top exchanges already, so there's not really a lot of room to grow for them versus those two, those two other two, which I just mentioned. So in my opinion, Uniswap also, the V3 was a bit of a failure because as people have reported, the gas fees actually been higher than they were on version two. And every time you're going to be bridging over, there's going to be unnecessary um, gas fees attached to changing your pools from one, one another and right now where the fees are very low it's fine but when the ethereum congestion goes again and you're going to be releasing a new version it's just going to be you know I'll uh, uh, just use this um, fees and I don't think that they have been really that fast as a developer team to also pushing out the version 3 which is a problem because I think they took them way too long where there was a lot of other competition where we were ready with this actually thing. And this is not just some noob team of uh, what we're talking about. Well, I'm, they might be, but they actually at least have gotten so much money and grants from a lot of people. And obviously their own token obviously made them shit ton of money. So um, there's just that idea behind this that I think it has been a bit of a failure uh, for the most part, to actually just, you know, get things running and provide real value. I think there could be uh, dividends paid out to the fees or something between those lines. And something of meaningful has to come out of governance to create utility for uni. How much uh, the governance can do about it is another question. And how will the governance actually act? It's within their interest to make the utility a more powerful uni for uni, I think. But as of right now, it stands. I think it's a very overvalued project. I still hold like 400 uni. I discovered a new account which had the airdrop. So uh, good for me. But the moment it hits back into like 50 bucks or something again, I'm dumping this and I'm never going to buy it again. Because I don't see any like future value for a coin that has literally... I mean, governance is not really that strong of a utility when you really think about it. And especially when Ethereum becomes less significant, so will Uniswap as well. So I just don't see the great uh, valuation here. I think it's massively overvalued. 
The market cap is so huge, 1 billion, and it just doesn't really add up. But let's move on. Uh, next up, we have Bitcoin Diamond. I have talked about shit about it before on the channel. And it's pretty much a fork out of Bitcoin. And it's still like 104th on the list. And there's no roadmap. I mean, look at everything on the post here is 2019. There's no community. There's no Twitter posts about it. It's a Chinese pump and dump project, which is only living by this pump and dump scheme. Yes, it's still listed, sadly, on many big exchanges. Uh, even Binance, but ultimately the BCD compared to let's say Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Gold has an actual development. They have roadmap, Lightning Networks, and everything. But this is like massively overvalued project, and I think it was a, a, pretty much a crime uh, to even pump it up uh, this this high. And I think raw the reasoning really comes down to when they forked out, begin in in the back in the 2017. Um, you know, people bought at those really ridiculous prices at, at that time. Maybe then it was a lot more valuable and actually development happened and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But that's just a similar effect as I see with HTC is that some people bought at these high prices at this, this uh, area here. And these people want to have their money back. And that's what they be doing right now. Just doing some type of pump and dump schemes for PCD in order to make their investment to basically come back to them. But yeah, if you're holding BCD, definitely dump it at as soon as possible. Um, another one is Zcash and Zcash, another Bitcoin fork. And a lot of my criticism really revolves around that they kind of went back on um, their white paper and decided to continue the founder rewards. And even when you have like founder rewards, which is basically extra treasury for the developers, I'm not really impressed what I'm seeing. And also they did fork into there's Ucash or Ycash, which is the fork out of Zcash, kind of dead right now, to be honest. And they were kind of the fork which didn't agree with the founder's uh, payment extension. And Zcash is just inferior to pretty much any other privacy coin out there. Um, why have Zcash when you have Monero? I mean, and even if you don't, if you want to mine on ASIC, technically, when late Litecoin releases Mimble Wimble, I mean, technically, it's better than Zcash at that point. Zcash is not exactly the most affordable. It's just like uh, like a Bitcoin Cash or a Bitcoin SV without any of the features. So there's so many better alternatives as a privacy coin or a Bitcoin fork uh, for Zcash. And they have no potential of actually ever succeeding to become the currency that people are going to be using to pay things. Yeah, there are multiple exchanges, obviously. But yeah, it's uh, it just technology-wise, it's just not too sound. And there's just better alternatives out there. And basically, it's just the Zionists who are basically running this project are kind of like pumping up in their banker ties, which kind of been allowing them to uh, stay at the top. And obviously, it's still like... And this is kind of like similar thing where it was at 1,600 at, at some point. And there's been kind of like a, a drought since then. And obviously it's been enjoying a bit of these pumps recently. But uh, there's no long-term future for Zcash. Uh, and there shouldn't be. But uh, let's move on uh, to our final thing to make this video a bit shorter than uh, 20 minutes. Don't want to make that long. Then we have Nem. Now, NEM obviously had a very big rally uh, due to the symbol airdrop. So as you can see... Um, in 2020, they announced that, hey, we're going to be announcing this airdrop one-to-one -one on Zim, which is basically another blockchain that they build out for Zim holders. And then this obviously uh, rise the price to pretty high. And then the airdrop happened. And I think it like crashed from here. Was it on the 17? I'm, I'm not remembering quite right now. Was it? It wasn't on March. I think it was on April when they did the drop. and uh, Or it could have been actually. I, I can't remember as of right now. But it, after that, it suddenly crashed very hard. Um, and Zem is very similar to ETC. It's a smart contract chain. Um, and you have zero development. I actually went through a lot of these dApps um, two months ago, perhaps, to look up. Are these even up? And most of them were not up. The, the sites were dead. And yeah, and Zem is still somewhat popular in Japan. And that's where I think a lot of the hype comes for it. I don't know what the Japanese people see in it exactly. It's not like they can use it on certain exchanges or anything. 
and maybe some people from Japan could maybe uh, tell me maybe they have a good marketing there or something like that. But um, Zem is like technology-wise kind of outdated. And then you just release this new coin with this symbol uh, XYM. And why would I hold Nem when I can hold this new coin of yours? So, <laughs> and they did run like out of money as the developer team run out of their money. And they basically didn't manage to build out anything. Nobody's building tokens on uh, Nim. Obviously, you have your Pundi X, and that's pretty much it. You don't have AMM swapping side. There's no DeFi on Nim. Uh, it's just a, like a, such a sub-bar product compared to a lot of the competition. And it has no place to be even in the top 200, to be honest. The supply is also pretty crazy. 9 billion. And uh, it seems to be mined already, a car, a par, uh, accordingly. So... I mean, what's the point of even staking it when there's no staking rewards to be had? So it, it's kind of one of those coins again, which was kind of meant to be the Ethereum killer, I guess. And uh, now it's just uh, shadow its former self. You know, imagine it was like over a dollar, almost two dollars at one point. But um, it's, it's an, just another project which is just kept by uh, the wash traders and stuff like that. And wash trading is the big problem in this space which is one of the reasons why these four projects, in my opinion, well, I think more with NEM and ETC, especially, and uh, Bitcoin Diamond, the wash trading is the main reason why these projects keep staying alive, despite there's actually no utility. And I don't think the traders necessarily understand always, like, how active is the product that I'm investing in. It's like buying Substratum now. Um, you know, like, there's no one building on that stuff right now. So... These are the five coins which I would dump as the next opportunity comes because I don't see they're going to be at those prices ever again. Uh, their current highs and I mean, unless there's massive manipulation, which is always possible, but these are definitely overvalued projects. Even so, it doesn't mean that they can't go up from their current prices. Uh, by all means, they probably will. But you're going to be holding these for long term. You're going to get fucked for sure. And the, the drops on some of these coins are going to be a massive, massive drop. Plus 90% for sure on ETC and NEM, I would argue. But thanks for watching. I will be seeing you guys on the next video when that happens.